your high blood pressure or your hypertension may be caused by low levels of potassium and yet your doctor may not be in the know. Please let me unpack it. My name is Dr. Enin, doctorate pharmacist and a functional medicine doctor. And again, welcome to the channel. Potassium is the order of the day. Potassium is the most important mineral or electrolyte in the body. It has a lot of physiologic functions. Today, I'm going to be focusing on the aspect of blood pressure, but I want to talk about or touch on a few things potassium does. Potassium is actually involved in the sodium potassium pump which is really not a pump, but an enzyme that helps with energy conduction in the body. Potassium also relaxes the blood vessels because it pulls calcium out of the arteries and pulls calcium out of the kidneys and it helps with hypertension and helps with blood pressure. Potassium also allows sugar to be stored as glycogen. Yes, it does help with sugar stored as glycogen. So what it means is that when we eat, when we consume carbohydrates, we have to store it as glycogen. So potassium is needed to have that conversion happen. Less potassium in the blood will mean that we will convert the sugar or we will convert the carbohydrate to fat. It goes the fatty acid storage pathway instead of the glycogen storage pathway. So we need potassium to store sugar as glycogen. So what that also means is that when we have less potassium we have excessive sugar cravings because we are not storing the sugar as glycogen and for that reason the blood sugar is not stabilized and once we have those dips we cause sugar cravings so what we also want to appreciate is that potassium actually helps with blood sugar stabilization now insulin also pulls potassium and gets them in the cells so when we are insulin resistant when we have done the excessive carbohydrate intake or when we have consumed excessive carbohydrates and we become insulin resistant what it means is that we have high levels of insulin the cell is a resistant insulin and for that reason we are unable to get potassium in the cells and of course when we are unable to get potassium in the cells that can trigger a lot of metabolic issues there is also the relationship between potassium and sodium they are supposed to be in the ratio of four is to one in the body more potassium and less of the sodium now when there's an imbalance between the two what happens is we have more salt which is sodium and it causes water retention and that can affect our blood pressure so we have to understand how potassium is implicated in hypertensive cases now what are the causes of low potassium there's a whole lot of things that can cause low potassium when we are over consuming carbohydrate hydrate we increase our insulin and by increasing insulin we cause potassium not to be able to go into the cell so as we are over consuming carbohydrates we are also depleting water we are also losing water and by losing water we lose our potassium reserves so that is also one area that we also want to know so that is one area that we lose potassium certain medications can deplete potassium levels antibiotics will do that diuretics such as the furosemide and hydrochlorothiazide will do that and also steroids will deplete potassium levels stress by way of cortisol will also increase our blood sugar levels and further let us lose water and by that mechanism we lose a lot of water so these are some of the areas that we can also lose potassium what are the best sources of potassium we can get potassium from so many sources but we also want to know that most of the population, about 90% of the population is insulin resistant. And for that reason, we have to be mindful of where we get our potassium from. For example, potatoes have good amount of potassium. A medium sized potato will give you about 600 milligrams of potassium. However, it has a lot of carbohydrates and that can also raise our blood sugar, raise our insulin and further deplete potassium along the line. So that is not an area that if you're insulin resistant, you want to be reaching out for potassium. Banana. Banana has good amount of potassium. Just a medium sized will give you about 300 milligrams of potassium, but it has a lot of fructose and that will heighten your blood sugar. That will increase your blood sugar levels and that will have a cascade of mechanisms that will also make things worse for the body, especially for the one who is metabolically compromised, especially for the one who is insulin resistant and also for the one who is type 2 diabetic so the best sources of potassium would be to reach out for the green leafy vegetables because a cup of a green leafy vegetable can give you between 500 and 80 milligram of potassium avocado is a good source because a medium-sized avocado will give you about 500 milligram of potassium so those are good sources of potassium however we need a lot of potassium 
we need about 4700 milligrams of potassium every day that is the recommended rda so we need almost 5000 milligrams and the range can be between 4700 and 6000 milligram of potassium a day and that requirement will require that we do about seven to 10 cups of greens or salad every day. The question is how many people doing seven to 10 cups of salad every day? Not a whole lot of people in my opinion. And that is why we have a lot of people with high blood pressure issue. So if you are looking to really optimize our blood pressure, then we have to look at our potassium levels. And like I said, we need a lot of that every day. The best source is reaching out for the green leafy vegetables. And now the reason why your hypertension may be because of low potassium levels and yet your doctor does not know about it may be because of two reasons. The first one is most mainstream doctors don't ask of your diet because potassium is not like vitamin D where you can get from the sun. You have to consume potassium on daily basis good amount in order to have good amount of potassium. The second thing is that potassium is an intracellular molecule. It means that 98% of the potassium is stored in our cells and not in our blood. So when you do blood work and we test our blood and our potassium is in a normal range, it doesn't really mean that we are good. It's only 2% that is in the blood and that is very tightly regulated by the body so most people are deficient in potassium and their doctor doesn't know because they are relying on the blood level potassium which is false which is only two percent of what the body has as far as potassium goes 98 percent is stored in our cells which no, most doctors don't test for and two percent is stored in our blood now anytime you do the blood work we are looking at the two percent and when the two percent is normal your doctor is pretty much overlooking it so if you really want to know the amount of potassium in the blood then you want to test your intracellular potassium which most doctors don't by a test called the rbc potassium that will give you a better picture of your potassium levels in the body so if you are asking if you are really talking to a patient and asking them of their diet then you can pretty much have a fair idea that your two percent is just being too regulated and that it is not giving the full picture so most people have been hypertensive for many years and they have never Never been tested as far as the intracellular potassium levels are concerned. So potassium deficiency may be the reason why you have a hypertension. So if we are looking to optimize our health, to optimize our blood pressure, to optimize our hypertension, then we need to take a good look at potassium. 98% of your potassium levels is displaced in the cells and only 2% is in the blood. And if you need to optimize it, then you need to be consuming good amount of potassium every day. And you cannot get it in the pills over the counter because over the counter, the pill, the maximum amount you can get in a pill form is about 99 milligrams. That will mean that you need about 47 tablets every day of potassium. So the best way is to consume it. The other way to get good amount of them is through an electrolyte. In the office, we give them an electrolyte powder where it has good amount of potassium and this, you just put it in water and sip it throughout the day to get the amount of potassium that they need. So if you are hypertensive and you have the standard American diet, which means a lot of carbohydrates, you are depleting your potassium reserves, you are actually not consuming enough potassium and don't be fooled by what you see on your blood work because by your diet, you already know that you are not doing enough potassium. And as a matter of fact, in the Paleolithic days, they were doing up to about 15,000 milligrams of potassium every day. And that was why hypertension and heart disease related conditions were absent. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and don't forget to follow and don't forget to share. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe so that we can keep this conversation going. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.